Welcome back to GEMS Podcast. I'm your host, Genesis Amaris Kemp, and with me today is Nathaniel Coomer. And here's a bit about Nathaniel. Nathaniel is 20 years old. He's also the author of The Three Keys to Success, which came out summer of 2021. He's an Eagle Scout and a volunteer firefighter for four years. He attended Purdue University for a year and a half, studying cybersecurity, where he then took a gap semester and transferred to California University of Pennsylvania to pursue a full-time online bachelor's degree in business administration. He will be declaring his minor and starting his MBA as an undergraduate junior in the fall. He currently works full-time alongside his studies as a field operations manager for 84 Lumber after co-running an HVAC business for the better part of a year. He has a podcast with two co-hosts, A New Perspective, where they try to be motivational and educational, as well as trying to keep things fun and lighthearted. It's about a year old, and he has reached 24 countries. And without further ado, please welcome Nathaniel Coomer to GEMS Podcast. Thanks for having me on, Genesis. I appreciate it. My pleasure. So today we're going to talk about the three keys to success. What are they and why are they important to you? Then afterwards, we're going to jump into what led you to writing your book. So the three keys to success are relationships, health, and wealth. Pretty simple. Um, And a lot of that is uh, just those are things that you think about in each every day, uh, at least in some aspect, at least one of those areas. And so broken down, you know, relationships, I don't necessarily mean intimate relationships. Those can be with friends, family. Um, In my case, it could just be customers who just come in the door and are here for only two minutes. Um, And it's really important to um, make sure you kind of give good care to those relationships, you know, um, with those customers, they might only be in here for two minutes, but they could end up coming back and giving us a couple hundred thousand dollars in a year. Um, So you just never know when that opportunity is lying there. Um, Investments or relationships are like investments and They are, you know, something you need to pay a lot of attention to, give some great care, you know, cultivate them and grow them, and those will eventually hopefully reap benefits for you. Uh, I know I've spent a lot of time networking, getting to know a lot of different people, and it's opened a lot of doors open for me, um, this being one of them. And um, so you never, you just never know. Um, As far as health, pretty self-explanatory, you have, you know, your physical health, your mental health, your emotional health, your spiritual health, um, you know, whatever you believe in, anything like that. And so, you know, there's all the different aspects within that. And I think those are very important to take great care with, especially mental health. I'm a big mental health advocate. Um, You know, I've lost a couple people to um, not having great mental health. And that was uh, another part of why I really wanted to incorporate all the different aspects, at least for that section of it, um, because I think mental health is really important. I think it's very overlooked, too, and, and kind of mistreated. And absolutely. the uh, last one, no, nope, go ahead. No, I was going to say absolutely. Mental health can definitely be overlooked because whenever people hear mental health, they think about the negative stigmas that come along with it. And sometimes people who are actually going through maybe a mental health break or a mental health crisis, they don't necessarily want to be open and outward about it because they don't want to be labeled a certain way. So I'm glad that you are talking about it. And then whenever you break down mental health statistics between a male and a female, Um, Males are suffering, but they never seek out help, whereas some of the females go for help quicker than a male does. So, yeah, thank you for bringing up that point. And I think to kind of bounce off of that, too, I think a big part of the reason why, you know, males especially more so are um, kind of less forthcoming about it. You know, we're, um, I guess, you know, and I say this kind of loosely, but in society, we're supposed to be um, strong you know, we're supposed to be stoic. We're not supposed to show all these emotions. If you do, you know, you kind of get looked down upon. You know, there's a lot of different factors that get taken into account of it. And 
the way I look at mental health specifically is um, the easiest way I can relate to it is it's a pandemic. There's so many people suffering and that are, you know, influenced by it. And it's a really big deal. And it's not really, you know, again, not being addressed properly. But um, the last thing is wealth. Now, I'm 20 years old. And I hate to I hate to put an age on myself or anything like that um, in, a, in a negative way. But when it comes to wealth, I don't know a great deal. There's a lot I still have to learn a lot I am learning. And I think that just comes with time and experience and, you know, the people you communicate with. But there are some things I include um, in the chapter of the book, a lot of different ideas and things like that. Um, specifically, um, and I'll even tie this back into the mental health. One of the things I'm doing is I'm working on a big project for uh, mental health. It's going to be um, a couple sets of clothing um, with some different designs, different lines, uh, kind of collections, if you will. And those are, we're going to try and work with an organization. Um, we already have them picked out, but we want to work with them and try and do like a charity project. And all the uh, designs are based around stigmas and emotions and ideas around mental health um, to kind of raise awareness about it. Um, but we do. Yep. No, no, no. I was gonna say, I was gonna say that's super cool that you are partnering with the organization because then you're gonna be branded by association because you're helping that organization out, but they're also helping um, you out by wearing your clothing line and getting it in front of more eyes. So increasing that visibility as well as awareness. Absolutely, and that's that's one of the biggest reasons why we want to do it is because they they have so much more reach than we do. Um, we, we wouldn't be able to touch anything that they can. Um, but yeah, so that, that'll be fantastic. But, um, in terms of wealth, you know, we do sell online clothing for, uh, that's branded by LTC, uh, Laugh Talk Connect, which is our brand. Um, we have, uh, the YouTube channel, we have the podcast, which, I mean, we're, we're barely over a year old, so it's very slow, pennies and dimes. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking any big money here. Um, the book was another one, you know, uh, I'm really trying to dip into, you know, the digital world of things, because a lot of times, um, like one of your previous guests spoke about a lot, some things require very little capital up front, and you can just make a lot of passive income based off of that. Um, so I, I kind of touch on a bunch of that different, those different things. Perfect. And thank you for framing it up because I like to build up the context that way the listeners as well as the viewers could connect where we're going and see why we're going down the path. And you mentioned the name of your podcast is LTC. What, what does that stand for again? So LTC is the brand name that is Laugh Talk Connect. Um, it's kind of like pillars, if you will, of what we want to do. Um, you know, we like to laugh. We like to have fun, you know, talk about um, serious things when need be, and just to connect with people and, and network, you know, that's something we're really big about. And the podcast name is The New Perspective, which you, you did mention about that earlier, but yeah. And then I want to go backwards here a little bit, and then we're going to kick it into drive. So um, you mentioned in the book, one of the pillars is wealth, but you don't know a lot about wealth. Do you feel at such a young age of 20 that if you would have had financial literacy, maybe in middle school and high school, it would have set you up for more success than having to do a lot of trial and errors and learn on the go? What are your thoughts there? Um, I tell you what, I, I did get... Um you know, some, some education in those, in those regards. Um, I did take some um, financial courses through high school and middle school. Um, as an Eagle Scout, one of the merit badges I had to do was finance. Um, so I did, I did get, for someone my age, I'm probably a lot more well-versed, um, at least that I know of with some of my close friends. I know a lot more about it than they do. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's always something definitely to learn. Um, and, you know, it comes to you know, I can't even get a loan by myself. I need co, I need co-signers, things like that. You know, and I haven't gone and bought a house yet. I haven't gone and bought my own car yet. You know, there's all these things I just haven't done yet. And I think that's the beauty of this book. And I, I believe I made a note to preface the book was, you know, this isn't professional advice. You know, this is just from experience and learning and supported by research that I've done. And one thing that I want to do is revisit the book over time and add more to it as I go through life because there's going to be a lot more to add and I think it you know could help a lot of people. 
Most importantly, so life, life advice and experiences, and no one can take that away because they don't know what you've been through or et cetera. So I like how you put that perspective there while also including a disclaimer, like this is not professional advice, but this is just what I've experienced or what I've researched. And I think that definitely puts things in context because you don't want people to hold you accountable. Like, oh yeah, I read Nathaniel Coomer's book and he told me these are the three keys to success. Why am I not successful yet? Because then it holds you to a higher standard or they put you on a pedestal when in actuality you're just trying to put your content out there to help somebody, maybe a 20-year-old or someone younger. And I know you are a co-owner of 84 Lumber. So where does that fall within your pillars of three keys to success? And how has it been influential in your life? Um, within the company, I'm still very um, fairly new. Um, only about a month and a half, two months. Um, but I've gone to different stores and gotten new experience that. And, you know, going off of the three keys to success, one of the things, uh, relationships. I've built great relationships with people uh, out at different stores. I was in Maryland for two weeks, built a great relationship with them out there. Um, I was in Syracuse. Um, I'm here at a different store up in Pittsburgh. I'll be down in Houston next week for a few days. Um, so, you know, a, a big part of that is building relationships with a lot of the people in the company, because at least for my position, uh, after about six to eight months, you're, if you do well, you're almost guaranteed a promotion, whether you want to go in a corporate or be a co-manager of a store. So at least for me, I want to make as many connections and network with as many people, whether it's in corporate or in these stores, as much as possible. And also, you know, connect with the customers, help them out. Um, you know, because they have their projects, I truly want to help them out and build relationships with them, you know, maybe build up accounts to increase sales for the company, things like that. Um, as far as health, this job, um, as far as mental health, this job makes me incredibly happy. Um, it pays well. <laughs> uh, I get to travel on somebody else's dime, see the world. And, you know, that's fantastic. I think it's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, that I've been very fortunate to get. And so, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Now, relationships might be a little strained since I'm always on the move, but, you know, everybody's understanding, we're able to work it out. It's not like I'm gone for too long or anything like that. Um, yeah, and wealth, I mean, not much to it. Salary <laughs> pays good. <laughs> That's awesome, especially with you after co-writing an HVAC and then now you're stepping into this field operations manager role. And I am with you. I love traveling on someone else's dime. That's one thing that I miss about oil and gas because I spent 12 years yeah. in the industry. And it was just super cool because I got to, you know, be picked up with um, a limo came to my house. I had a corporate Amex card. I had the nice hotels, the nice dinners and et cetera until it ended due to a layoff. And I'm like, oh my gosh, all I know is oil and gas for 12 years. But my experiences um, were able to afford me the ability to write my book, um, which came out in May of 2020, and then another one in February of 2021. So I think that's really cool. And one thing that I always like to tell the younger generation, I'm not that much older than you. Um, I have you a little bit on the bar by 10 years. But um, one thing that I could say is with age, being married, starting a family, and other dynamics that are going on in my life, it definitely takes time to balance because sometimes people don't see what you're doing behind the scenes. They always see you up on the forefront. So one thing that I learned early on um, by some of my seasoned co-workers were be mindful to diversify your wealth, especially whenever you're making a salary. How much are you contributing to a 401k? Does that company have a pension? Um, are there any stocks and bonds or annuities or et cetera that you wanna get into? And what vehicles are you going to use to diversify your wealth, whether that's gonna be passive income, that residual income or et cetera, because we all know that Jobs are not guaranteed, um, especially AKA the pandemic. Look how many people were laid off. So you definitely have to be well-versed and well-rounded in case something does happen. Like in my case, 
I'm married. So I was able to fall back on my husband. It didn't feel nice because it feels good to have my own money to go get my nails done or thread my eyebrows or whatever fun things that I want to do or happy hours, which I haven't been to a happy hour in a long time. And when I did go, I couldn't drink for obvious reasons. Um, so that was different, but that's one thing that I wanted to plug there for any of the younger people listening to this segment is just really be mindful of how you're stewarding the money that you're bringing in because your health is very important and you want to definitely make sure you have something stored away for the future. So back to you, and Nathaniel. Yeah, absolutely. 100% agree with you. Um, and one thing I want to you know, kind of note to the younger demographic too. And this is a big reason why I do what I do or why we do the podcast, why I wrote the book. It's geared towards the younger demographic. You know, um, like I mentioned earlier, I don't like to, you know, put an age on myself. And what I mean by that is I don't like to, you know, say, oh, I'm only 20, you know, because sometimes people bring that up in your face. Well, why should I give you this opportunity? Why do you think you can do this, et cetera? I don't think age really matters. I think it depends on your work ethic, uh, your you know your level of respect, um, and just kind of those different things. I don't and what you've been through too. You know, um, I've been through quite a lot myself. Not saying more so than another person, but I think it's made me very level-headed and mature for my age. A lot wiser. I've gotten a lot more different experiences than most people that I know around my age, and it's allowed me to you know be able to do what I do. So don't really put that much pressure on yourself you can do whatever you want as long as you know you have your bases down you dot your t's and, or you dot your cross your t's and dot your i's uh, crisscross it whatever <laughs> yeah so then switching back into the three keys of success now that we know their relationships health as well as wealth when you were writing the book what was the hardest chapter to write in the book and how has that strengthened you with that personal as well as professional growth that's a that's a very good question i wouldn't necessarily say that any one of them was harder than the other um I wrote them in segments. I did it very off and on over the course of a year. And so when I did that, I took time to collect my thoughts and think of what I want to, how I want to proceed, how I want to um, kind of structure and frame the uh, different ideas. I think that was the toughest part, um, more so than the actual writing of them. I think, you know, the, the wealth chapter is certainly a challenge. Like I said, I don't have as much experience, um, as much knowledge and financial literacy as I would like. So that was definitely a struggle. Um, I think relationships to, um, I think that just opened up my eyes about a lot of different things. And I learned probably the most from that chapter specifically, and it just changed my perspective on, you know, how I approach people, um, how I work with them, how I interact with them. Um, yeah. Well, and then with relationships, since you did learn a lot about it and you are, you are young. Um, so how do you balance your personal relationships and your professional relationships? Because I'm sure you're at the age where you want to date, you want to have a life outside of work and work shouldn't consume you. There should be a balance between the two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do have a girlfriend we've been together for about eh, probably coming up on a year and a half now, um, that long distance. Um, she was going to a college down here in Pittsburgh, but she's from Buffalo and she's taken some time off. Um, but we see each other pretty regularly. Um, so we make that work. You know, we talk pretty much daily. Um, as far as, you know, other friends and things like that, I think I've kind of limited my relationships in, with particular people um, to kind of surround myself with the best. And those are the people I talk to the most. Those are the people that I keep up to date and things like that. And I think they're all pretty understanding. And I make it clear, you know, here's my work time. Here's when I have personal time. You know, if I'm working, you know, I'll do my best to accommodate you. And I am very flexible with a lot of different things. Um, I'd like to say that I'm pretty understanding and have a holistic view on things. Um, but it is definitely difficult. You know, I work 50 hours here. I go home, I do school that maybe takes another 30, 40 hours of work. And then I have to fit in, you know, relationships with family, friends, my girlfriend, et cetera, within whatever time I have left. 
I probably overwork more than what I spend um, to the relationships, but my relationships are strong. They're good. Um, and they're, you know, I've built a strong base with them. So I'm not really as worried about this. Um, and I think that's something you need to know of, do I need to spend a lot more time and attention to this relationship than what I'm doing over here? And really the balance is very subjective to you and your lifestyle and how you want to live it. That was a really great point. And I like how you differentiate it with this is my work time, this is my social time and et cetera, because it's establishing boundaries for you, but it's also establishing boundaries for the other people that are connected to you in your life. And I think in all areas of our life, we need to really work on creating those boundaries, setting up those safe places so we don't hit a period of burnt out, as well as, you know, making sure that we take time to nurture ourselves so we we could perform at the hop optimal levels that we desire. And I'm going to switch here into the health gear, and it's going to be geared towards your personal health. Because when you're working 50 hours a week, and you may be doing school 30 hours, even though it's online, you could kind of do it to your leisure. But of course, there's deadlines and etc. How do you how are you ensuring that you are getting in your overall health? Like, do you have morning routines? How, what's your fitness and nutrition like, and etc. So you can make sure that you have a solid balance between mind, body, and soul. That's a good question. Um, I guess in terms of, you know, um, nutrition, you know, I make sure I eat a little something for breakfast, um, you know, do all the normal hygiene things, make sure I'm taking care of myself before I head out the door. And I'll bring a lunch with me typically. So I have something to eat here. Typically I do it while I'm working, um, you know, with how busy it gets here. I'm usually up at the front counter. So you don't always necessarily have time to sit back and take that time. Um, dinner when I get home, my mom's a fantastic cook. Uh, kind of don't want to leave just because of that really. Um, but you know, I eat dinner. Um, I'll, I'll work on some of the school work. I'll tell, I'll tell my family, you know, I have a brother and my mom and dad, I'll tell them, Hey, I got to work on this. I'll close my door. I'll go work on it. And they know, you know, Hey, he's working. Um, I'll usually do uh, just simple, simple workouts. I used to go to a friend's gym five days a week. Now I just do push-ups and sit-ups. I get a good workout here, uh, <laughs> carrying around lumber and things like that. So I don't, I don't push it too much. Um, as far as the other areas, I guess mental health is, that's always been the biggest struggle for me. Um, I'm a thinker. I think a lot sometimes more than I should. And, you know, especially with how much I work, I'm always thinking. Um, so I think finding ways to decompress has been the most helpful. Um, you know, I might watch a couple YouTube videos. I might listen to a podcast episode or whatever, or watch something on Netflix for a little bit uh, just before I go to bed, maybe half an hour or something. And so I just make sure I always have that little sliver of time for myself to just not have to think about anything, not have to worry about it and just take that time. And usually that's the same thing with my commute to work in the morning. I just take the time, listen to some music, get in a good mood, do a little dance and on my way. Nice, nice. And uh, one thing that I would say for people who do have busy schedules like yours and you find yourself eating at your desk sometimes, one thing that I like I like to do whenever I was working in corporate was putting specifically on my calendar a block for lunch, whether it's 30 minutes some days or an hour. And I'll do it as a dummy meeting because if I don't do it as a dummy meeting, then I could easily run ragged, especially with the engineers, if I'm running a chemical unit or et cetera. And especially when I was working out in the chemical plant, I interface with a ton of stuff. And the one thing you ever want to do is stock out a chemical plant plant because it's millions and millions of dollars if the unit shuts down. So I would just close my office door, put a meeting on my calendar so I could actually have time to decompress and have lunch. And then I knew that sometimes I would get busy because around the time that I was working in the chemical plant, my now husband had proposed and I couldn't make it to any of the vendor meetings. So he is such a godsend because he pretty much planned our entire wedding except my hair, makeup, nails, and dress. 
So what I had to do was meal prep. And he also helped me with that too, because my husband's a chef by trade, which is amazing. Um, Cause I'm definitely not the cooker. And if I do cook, it's going to be like Rachel Ray, 30 minute meals or less. So I can watch TV or something. Um, so that's a good thing to build in is meal prepping. It will save you a ton, whether you're doing batch cooking where you just cook chicken and you use different um, recipes to re repurpose it. One day you'll have tacos, another day you'll have something else or whatnot. Um, then blocking off time on your calendar so you could actually have time by yourself to really enjoy your lunch because eating on the go, sometimes your food doesn't digest properly and it's very important and then the other tip that I wanted to add here, Nathaniel, is when you're commuting to, yeah, one thing that I always used to do is like listen to music because it got to a point where I was just so burnt out. I did not want to work in the office anymore. So instead of listening to music, I started listening to things for personal growth and development, whether it was like podcasting or audio books. And then it helped me really change some of my perspective because I love like hip hop, R&B, rap or whatnot. And then some days it was like, oh, I'm listening to this junk. And, you know, sometimes I go to work and I'm real angry and I cannot say the things I want to say because I'll be like what <laughs> so that's just um some fun little tips there that I wanted to interject and as we begin to wind down Nathaniel I want you to leave our listeners as well as the viewers with one to two gems one could be something that complements the core pillars of this podcast which are something to educate inspire or motivate and the other gem could be a lifestyle tip a quote or etc that you've used with you throughout the duration of your life? I think I might actually wrap both up in a one. Um, I think, you know, my main purpose with a lot of what I do is to motivate people to be more ambitious, to try and be more successful, and ultimately just be their best selves. Um, every day I'm working on one part of myself. And I think that's sort of a call to action to the listeners here. Find something that you don't necessarily like about your routine or whatever. And you pick that something and you work on it and you're going to have back steps, but you just keep working on it, keep chipping away. And I do that with every little thing, especially with those three keys. I work on at least one of those things every single day. And so I think that's, that's very important and you'll find yourself enjoying and, and liking yourself more, so to speak, um, you know, in terms of you'll be more content and fulfilled with yourself and eventually, you know, more happier, which could result in being more successful. Amazing. And thank you for lumping those two together. That was a beautiful way to put that um, bow on the gift. And then now I want you to let the listeners know how they could connect with you. What's your website and where you hang out most on social media? I'll tell you what, um, my social media presence has been very lacking lately. Um, I do have, you know, I have Instagram. Um, do you, do you typically include our links in the description? I do. They go in the show notes at the bottom. Okay. So I will, I'll send you the link. Um, it has everything in there from the podcast to our YouTube channel. I have a blog site, the book, all my social media stuff. Um, I think my email might even be in there. Um, and you can reach me at any of that for anything. On your link tree? Yes. Okay. And then for those of you listening, I actually have his link tree pulled up. So it's link, um, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E backslash L-T-C Kings. And I will drop that info because it's a one stop, one tap where you can get all of his information in one centralized location. And Nathaniel, I want to thank you so much for coming on Gems Podcast, sharing the three keys to success that has helped you, relationships, health, and wealth. And I want to congratulate you on having a book out and all the things that you are doing. So thank you once again. For you listeners and viewers, it's been an honor. Peace, love, and lots of blessings. Don't forget to subscribe and share the podcast. We are on 40 plus platforms and our YouTube content is found at Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp. Until we chat next time, ciao.